Okay, as you can see in today's video, I am going to go over an explanation for discharging a capacitor, and we're going to be talking about the voltage with respect to time across the capacitor and the current through the circuit with respect to time, and I hope also to give you a good explanation of the time constant, kind of a conceptual understanding of the time constant, which we calculate as R times C. Now, this is the kind of the circuit I'm going to be using or talking about a little bit in this video. We previously charged the capacitor with a 12-volt battery, so there's 12 volts across the capacitor. The previous video, which you can link to up in the upper right, we had the 470 microfarad capacitor. So we, now we have a 470 microfarad capacitor with 12 volts across it. We're going to discharge that capacitor through this 57K ohm resistor. Okay, and let's do that right now. Okay, so we're talking about discharging a capacitor with respect to time. And you can see this is a graph of the voltage across the capacitor and the current across the, through the circuit with respect to time. The first thing I want you to notice is that this graph, is in the time axis, is not given in like absolute time as far as 30 seconds or 2 minutes or 1 minute and 30 seconds. The time is given in time constant. This symbol tau is a time constant, a symbol for the time constant. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 time constants. The same thing for the time on the current graph, given in time constants, 0 through 5 time constants. In a moment, I'll show you how we calculate the time constant and talk a little bit about what it is, but you should notice that time is in time constants. Also, the voltage and the current are given as a percentage of the initial maximum voltage and current, not as some absolute voltage like 2, 3, 4, 5 volts or half an amp, a quarter of an amp or something like that. The voltage is in percent of a maximum, same with the current, and the time is in time constants. Okay. Now, this is the equation we use to calculate the voltage with respect to time across the capacitor as we're discharging the capacitor. You'll notice that each of the curves for the voltage and the current are exponentially decaying curves because as we discharge the capacitor, the voltage across the capacitor gets less, reduces to zero, and the current through the circuit after going to its maximum will also decay to zero. Okay, this is the equation for the voltage with respect to time. It's equal to the initial maximum voltage times E raised to the power of minus T over RC. V0 is the initial voltage across the capacitor. E is a mathematical constant, 2.72. Raised to the power of minus T, T as in voltage with respect to time, divided by R times C. R is the resistance of the resistor. C is the capacitance of the capacitor. And we have a similar graph and a similar equation for the current because the current is also decaying over time. The current with respect to time is equal to the initial maximum current, also times E raised to the power of minus T over RC. Well, what is RC? RC, that is how we calculate the time constant. The time constant tau is calculated simply as the resistance of the resistor times the capacitance of the capacitor. Now, the next thing you should notice is that because the time is given in time constants, that for any combination of resistor and capacitor, capacitor and resistor, any pair of these two things, the resistor and the capacitor, after one time constant, after one time constant, the voltage across the capacitor will be reduced to 36.8% of the initial maximum. The current will also be reduced to 36.8% of the maximum, initial maximum current, and so on and so forth for one, two, three, four, five time constants. 36.8, 13.5, 5, 1.8, and 0 0.7. We usually stop at five time constants because that's when we consider the capacitor to be fully discharged. All right? So let's just say, for example, we have, as I showed in the previous slide, a 57K ohm resistor and a 470 microfarad capacitor. You multiply these two numbers together and you get that the time constant for this pair of resistor and capacitor is 26.8 seconds. Only for that pair of resistor and capacitor. If you have a distant, different resistor and a different capacitor, then you have a different time constant. But in any case, after one time constant, the voltage is always reduced to 36.8%. So for this pair, after 26.8 seconds, the current will be reduced to 36.8% of the maximum. After two time constants, which I believe is 53.6 seconds, it'll be reduced to 13.5%. After three time constants, which I believe is 80.4 seconds, then it will be reduced to 5% of the initial maximum. And that goes for the current and the voltage. All right. Now you can see that the time constant really tells us how long it takes either to charge or in this case to discharge a capacitor. If we want the capacitor to take longer to discharge, 
we can increase the resistance. If we want it to discharge more quickly, we can decrease the resistance. All right, so that's really what the time constant gives us some information about is how long it takes to discharge the capacitor. You'll also notice that the time it takes to discharge is not dependent upon the initial voltage or the initial current, only on the resistance of the resistor and the capacitance of the capacitor. Change those things, you get a different time constant. Okay. Now I want to look a little bit more closely at this graph and these values and where they come from using the equation. You can see that this is the graph for the voltage, this is the equation. And for this pair, as we talked about in the previous slide, the, um, uh, the time constant is 26.8 seconds. Now let's see how do we get 36.8% from this equation for one time constant. Well, one time constant is 26.8 seconds, so that's going to go in here. T is the time, but we want to know after one time constant. So in this case, after one time constant, we've had the same amount of time, 26.8 seconds. And we take the initial voltage times E raised to the power of minus 26.8 over 26.8, which is E raised to the power of minus 1. If you take E raised to the power of minus 1, you get 0 0.368. So the initial, that tells you that the voltage across the capacitor after one time constant is equal to 0 0.368 or 38.6%, 38.6, of the initial maximum. Now if you want to know what it is for two time constants, we're going to leave 26.8 in here because that's the time constant. We would multiply this by 2 and of course we get 50. 3.6, or you could just say e to the minus 2, and then you would get 13.5% of the maximum. For three time constants, or e to the minus 3, it's 5%. For four, it's 1.8. And after five time constants, when we consider the uh, capacitor to be fully discharged, it's 0.7% of the initial maximum. Okay, So that's where we use our time constant and the amount of time and we would have E raised to the minus 1, 2, 3, 4, or minus 5. Okay? Now let's kind of do the same thing quickly for the current, but it's the same general idea. I just went ahead and substituted the values in E to the minus 1, and obviously you get that after one time constant, the current through the circuit is going to be 36.8% of the initial maximum current. And we do the same thing for the current for up to five time constants. Time constant is the same for each, 26.8 seconds. I'm just substituting a different time in here. One time constant, as I said, like 53.6 seconds for two time constants, 80.4 for three time constants, 107.2 for four time constants, and then something like 130 or something like that, 35 for five time constants, okay? All right, now that is how the time constant works for those circuits. And then we can draw this table or write this table up, discharging the capacitor. You can see after one time constant, um, well, this is, this is the column for time constants, one through five. This is the voltage and the current as a percentage of the initial maximum. And you get the same thing because they're both exponentially decaying curves. Sometimes we want to know what is, uh, or when will the voltage or the current be reduced by half? That would be after about 0 0.7 time constants, okay? So there you go. That's the voltage and the current with respect to time for discharging a capacitor. Uh, that's the time constant. And hopefully that gives you a good understanding of those three things and how it works when we discharge a capacitor through a resistor. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all the following three things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Leave me a nice positive comment or let me know, did you like the video? Did you find it helpful? I appreciate all your comments. And then um, give me a thumbs up for this video too, if you liked it. Thank you very much for watching. We'll hope to see you in the next video.